हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज योर इकोनॉमिक्स कोच प्रतीक भसीन बैक विद द चैप्टर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर व्हिच इज एट्थ चैप्टर ऑफ योर बुक इंडियन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट फॉर क्लास इलेवेंथ इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर व्हाट आर द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ रूरल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर व्हाट इज द स्टेट ऑफ रूरल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एनर्जी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन टूडेज क्लास वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट health infrastructure so now what is health so health is a process of overall growth and development of the nation by improving the quality of manpower under health infrastructure there are wide variety of manpower which is indulged into it and it includes doctors nurses support staffs and also the hospitals dispensaries clinics etc health status in a country is indicated by many indicators like infant mortality rate maternal mortality rate morbidity life expectancy at birth death rate etc now let's talk about the three tier system under which our economy's health infrastructure is classified the first one being primary healthcare system so on the primary health care this is the basic health care services which are being provided to the public it includes the dispensaries and clinics in a locality all these services provided by these health care centers are free it also provides with medicines and expert opinion from the doctors then we have the secondary health care which includes hospitals in a district it also provides surgeries and expert opinion from the doctors it also has diagnosis labs then at the uppermost level is the tertiary healthcare structure which includes advanced medical care of complicated diseases it also provides educational services and also gives some researches on diseases like aims in new delhi which is all india institute of medical sciences so it conducts many researches on many diseases it also provides quality education on medicine now let's move on to our next topic which is indian system of medicine indian system of medicine comprises of ayush which is naturopathy ayurveda yoga yunani siddha and homeopathy in india there is a separate ministry for the same which is known as ministry of ayush or ayush ministry now let's move ahead and talk about the state of health infrastructure in india now before talking about this topic i need to explain that i will be talking about some data but this data might change from time to time so you need to confirm this data by referring to your book so let's go ahead with this topic and talk about the state of health infrastructure you will be surprised to know that after so many years of independence our health infrastructure has actually improved so our health infrastructure has actually expanded from the previous years you will be surprised to know that the total number of beds that are available in our country is around 7.1 lakhs and they are increasing similarly the number of allopathic doctors is around 10.4 lakhs and the number of nurses is around 28.8 lakhs and they are increasing day by day now we should not ignore the role of private sector which is my second point the private sector plays a most important role in the health infrastructure in our country it plays a very dominant role because around 80% of the outpatients visit private healthcare centers outpatient means when the patient will be served for only a single day that means he gets his treatment within the same day inpatient on the other hand refers to when a patient has to visit the hospital and be there for more than one day 
you'll be surprised to know that private hospitals cater around 46% of the inpatients. Similarly, 70% of the total hospitals in India are private hospitals and 60% of the dispensaries are private owned. So, we can conclude that the private sector plays a major role in the health infrastructure of our country. Now, we will be talking about the impact of good health infrastructure. Our government has continuously taken many steps which has improved the health infrastructure in India and that can be seen from several indicators. The first one being the infant mortality rate. The infant mortality rate currently is 34 per 1000 live births. This means that children before the age of 1 year which die are only 34 per 1000 live births. On the other hand, the under 5 mortality rate is around 39.4 per 1000. Similarly, the life expectancy is 68.5 years and it is increasing day by day. Similarly, the death rate is around 7.1 per 1000. So, it has been controlled due to the availability of good health infrastructure in India. Also, we have eradicated smallpox and polio in our country because our government has taken many aggressive steps to completely eradicate these diseases. Now, we are also a major medical tourism destination. That means, many people across the world travel to India for getting their diseases rectified. This means that they are coming to India and getting themselves healthy. So, we have around 2 lakh visitors in 2016 and we have an earning of rupees 500 billion which is around 50,000 crore rupees and is expected to grow by 15 percent per annum and it is still growing. Also, we have some communities and NGOs which are helping in the health infrastructure. To name a few, we have Seva in Ahmedabad, Accord in Nilgiri and we have Kashtakari Sangathan. Now, let's talk about the challenges which are being faced by the Indian health infrastructure or why does India requires a strong health infrastructure. Even after taking so many steps, India has not been able to completely tackle the problems of health. These can be highlighted in the following points. The first point is high global burden of diseases. India's global burden of diseases is 20 percent. Its morbidity rate is very high. Global burden of diseases refers to the number of people dying or the number of people living in a state of permanent disablement in the whole world. So, it is 20 percent. This means that the number of people who are dying or who are permanently ill, India constitutes 20 percent of the whole world. Similarly, the state of primary health centers is very poor. You will be shocked to know that only 38 percent primary health centers have doctors and only 30 percent of them are stocked up with medicines. Rest 70 percent also lack basic medicines and similarly 62 percent of the primary health centers do not have doctors. Then we have a urban rural divide. The healthcare facilities are not uniformly available across our country. In rural areas, there are only one-fifth of the total hospitals while in the urban areas, four-fifths of hospitals are present. This means that around 80% of the hospitals are present in urban areas, whereas in urban areas, only 20% of the hospitals are constructed. Similarly, when we talk about the number of beds in rural areas, it is around 11% of the total beds available. Similarly, urban areas comprise of 89% of the total beds. This means that around 9 tenth, this means around 90% of the beds are available in urban areas, whereas rural areas comprise of only 11% beds. Then we need to talk about the hospital population ratio. In rural areas, for every 1 lakh people, only 0.36, yes, I repeat, 
only 0.36 hospitals are available. This means that one hospital serves 3 lakh people. And on the other hand, in urban areas, the situation is not so good, but it is around 3.6 per 1 lakh. So, for every 1 lakh people in urban areas, there are around 3.6 hospitals. Then we talk about the poor rich divide. Poor are disproportionately affected by diseases. They spend around 12% of their total income on their health care. Similarly, rich spend only 2% of their total income. So, there is a poor rich divide as well. Then we have some communicable diseases. So, half of the global burden of diseases is due to communicable diseases in India. There are around 5 lakh children which die annually due to these communicable diseases. So, our government should take steps to improve the situation on communicable diseases. Then, a major concern is the poor health of women. This is because there is female feticide which has still not been controlled. It is still very high. In some areas, children, that is, children marriage takes place at a very early age. And majorly, this means that girls are married at a very early age. Also, 19% maternal deaths are caused due to lack of blood, that is, anemia. Most of the deaths take place within the age group 15 to 49 years. So, we need to be concerned about the health of women as well. Then we have privatization of healthcare facilities in India. In India, the healthcare facilities have been privatized and the major suffering community is the poor community because they cannot afford the expenses of private healthcare. So our government should bring up a control mechanism to control the expenses to be paid by the poor. On the other hand, we are trying to control the private sector, but at the same time, the government health facilities are not adequate. The government should provide more healthcare facilities in rural areas as well, so that they don't have to travel a lot and come to urban areas to get themselves treated. So this is where we end your chapter. In this part, we discussed about the health infrastructure, in which we discussed about many services that are being provided to the public. It actually refers to the process of growth and development to improve the quality of manpower by providing them quality health services. Then we discussed about the three-tier healthcare system under which we discussed about primary, secondary and tertiary healthcare. We also discussed about the Indian system of medicine, which includes Naturopathy, Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. Then we discussed about the state of health infrastructure in India. And in the end, we discussed about the challenges which are being faced by the health infrastructure in India. I hope the government takes steps and improves this situation very soon. So I hope you were able to cope up with this lecture. I will see you in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.